Since the beginning of last Congress, this is the sixth time that our subcommittee has convened to look specifically at the humanitarian crisis in Syria. I'm grateful that we are welcoming back some of those organizations that testified before us last year and welcoming one new one. And we thank all of you for your work under these very difficult circumstances. While the news about Syria today is dominated by geopolitics or the U.S. domestic political ramifications of the latest Russian airstrikes against anti-Assad rebels, or the strain faced by EU countries because of the hundreds of thousands of mostly Syrian refugees flowing across their borders, I think it's important to remember that the Syrian crisis did not come about just from a few days ago. We now have, at the very least, 25 million people who are going through unimaginable pain and suffering in their lives, lives that have been absolutely turned upside down in the past few years. Uh, for years, this subcommittee has been advocating for a comprehensive strategy uh, toward the Syrian humanitarian crisis. And even though recent news headlines focus on the amount of refugees that are heading to Europe, we cannot forget about the millions of refugees who remain in the Middle East. Internally, 7.6 million Syrians have been displaced. What a number. Uh, at least 4.1 million have fled abroad to Syria's neighbors, especially Turkey, Lebanon, Jordan, Iraq, and Egypt. The UN High Commissioner for Refugees has called the combined situations in, in Syria and Iraq a mega crisis, one in which over 25 million people have been affected by the violence and brutality of Bashar al-Assad and ISIL. At least 16 million Syrians, including refugees registered abroad, are in need of humanitarian assistance. And combined with the over 300,000 people already dead, it is fair to say that in Syria, we may be witnessing one of the largest humanitarian disasters of our modern times. Uh, the best and only surefire way to end the internal suffering and its ex external consequences <clears throat> like the refugee crisis, excuse me, is to put an end to the conflict in Syria and remove Assad from power. In the meantime, the United States will continue to try to improve the ability of those on the ground to deliver aid uh, through both security and uh, diplomatic solutions and build the capacity by our partners and those suffering uh, communities to respond on their own. The United States has already met the humanitarian crisis with a tremendous response, donating over $4.5 billion in aid since the conflict in Syria began seriously four years ago. However, there are many questions that need to be answered about the efficacy and the con continuity of our aid and the monitoring capacities and the capabilities of our implementing uh, partners, the lack of assistance being provided by others in the region and elsewhere. I remain concerned that despite the large amounts of aid and resources being donated, very little of our assistance is reaching those desperately in need. <coughs> Excuse me. In our February hearing on the humanitarian crisis, the administration testified at that time 72% of our $3 billion in aid was going through the UN. We must ensure that there are sufficient monitoring capabilities in place to prevent fraud or corruption and to ensure that aid is not being diverted or falling into the hands of ISIL, the Assad regime, or other terrorist groups. I'm also concerned about the ability of NGOs to, to access those in need when faced in, with the dangerous situation on the ground in Syria. Humanitarian, <coughs> I apologize. <coughs> Humanitarian workers must be allowed to reach those who are suffering <coughs> without fear of retaliation. You might want to reconsider where you're sitting. <coughs> Thank you. Vodka, great. <laughs> That'll do it. Thank you, Ted. We must also not accept the arguments of some who contend that Russia and Iranian involvement will be beneficial to the humanitarian response. 
nothing good will come out of Russian and Iranian involvement in Syria. This will be the first time in over a year that the subcommittee has heard from NGOs and our implementing partners operating on the ground in Syria. And I'm grateful that they've come here today to share their perspectives and to provide suggestions on how we can better respond to this sadly ever-growing humanitarian tragedy. <coughs> and I'm very pleased to turn to my ranking member, Ted Deutsch.